You shovel in coal and out comes coal. So what am I taking out of my food? I'm a tree sucking the living daylights out of the sun. Making balls of light, which I call fruit. And that fruit is the difference between a human doing and a human being. Because that light powers your thoughts and your consciousness. Consciousness is light. So if I don't ingest enough light, then I'm going to be a human doing. So your customers need to drink water, eat organic fresh fruit and vegetables, and then you can do your work. If they do not, do not see them. I'm not allowing you to have an appointment with me until you're drinking six glasses of water a day. Wow. Try it. We know very well the human body. In fact, you people especially, I was thinking this morning that I might not say this, but I can't resist. My two best ever lovers, one was German and one was Dutch. So I do not need to talk to you people about the body. But I would like to share with you the fact that modern medicine is propped up by devices which peer into the body. And I say, at what price? At what price do we x-ray our bodies? Okay, I'm standing here naked and some guy is wearing a lead apron and he has pissed off around the corner behind a lead shade and he's like, Bing. And I'm standing there naked, getting zapped by his machine. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what it is, is an illusion. It's an illusion called modern medicine. You see, this is all very fine and dandy in Dusseldorf, but I've never seen one of these in a village. We can't afford that. As Gandhi said, there's enough for all of our need, not enough for all of our greed. We have to spread it thin. I'll take this argument further. The ultrasound. When I scan a mother and I can see that there is a female inside, in Germany we're happy because we've got an opportunity to name that child. We've got a few weeks to work out a name. But in China, it's a death sentence. In India, because of the dowry system, it's a death sentence. More people have been murdered using the malpractice of the ultrasound machine than have ever died in any war. There's 197 million girls missing from the demographics in three countries alone because doctors or sonographers have in collusion with the culture of dowry and one-child policy. Now, I'm not making a judgment here because God, in my book, has got an all-seeing eye. He doesn't have a blind spot. So maybe these 200 million wombs out of the population is a billion children that we couldn't afford to feed. I'm not judging it. I'm just saying, isn't there another way? Isn't there another way where we can do this and nobody needs to suffer? You need the right device to screen the breast. X-ray mammography is not the one. It never has been and it never will be. If this gives me cancer, can I get my money back? Seventy-five percent of women in the West who have breast cancer have got very high doses of ionizing radiation from medical equipment. 
It is your responsibility to do something about it. It is not an accident that we are in here today. It is your responsibility. You've taken on the challenge. You have to deal with it. I'm not talking through you. I'm talking to every single person in the room. Now you know this. Ignorance is bliss, but you know it now. You know it now, and you people are the ones who've chosen karmically to do something about it. And I hope you bloody do, because nobody else will. Seventy-five percent of women have cancer, potentially. This is the, the pioneer of molecular biology who developed the chemicals that are used and the radiation ionizing material that's used in breast screening devices. He's not just some guy. The best way to screen the breast is with thermal imaging because the cancer creates its own heat. It shows up like a bright light. I have a technology which shows the biofield, and again, the cancer shows up as a bright light. How many of you use the EIS? Well, once you've spent all your money on NES equipment, and you've got some left, buy an EIS, or buy a thermal imaging camera, or get together and work as a team. The problem with science is they've got faulty equipment. They're using a ruler to measure everything called the electromagnetic spectrum, which is only the tip of the iceberg. And as I said earlier, there's so much information in the ancient mysteries that we need to collate and investigate, and so many wonderful images in each of the different traditions. White discovered 130 different traditions which have vocabulary which describes a feature in the biofield, a chakra or a nadi. And they're everywhere. Wherever you look, you will see. In fact, if any of you are not clairvoyant, I would like to prove to you that you are today. All you have to do is, during this lecture, look around my head. And I say me because you're looking at me. It's not that I'm pumping anything special out. But if you don't look at my nose or my eyes, and you don't stare or, or focus on me, and you just like one of those 3D posters with a dolphin is going to come out, if you look at me like that, you will see a white light around my head, very clearly. Can anyone see it already? It's not difficult. Keep looking. Stop staring. Just look. And the other game is to look past me, but see me or your friends. You will see that you are all clairvoyant, because clairvoyant means clear seeing. There's all kinds of information out there. Someone showed a slide, As Above, So Below, yesterday. My friend Brucey e. Lipton's book. But this is what we're here to talk about today. Okay? The anatomy and physiology of the human biofield. The human aura. Of course, we had to wait for the laptop to be invented. And this is an early version from ancient Rome. <laughs> Notice the, the style of USB sockets they had in those days. As above, so below. The mouse's brain, the universe. It's the same stuff, the same picture, the same world. Plasmoids, chakras, universes, 
magnetic fields. So basically, I don't come at you with tea leaves, peacock feathers, and pendulums, because you ain't going to believe me. You'll say, oh, he's moving his arm. Or he go, oh yeah, I can do that as well. Yes, no, 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 yes, 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 no. It's not credible. We're in an era of technology which can perceive the subtle body. Ness, Pip, GDV, there's so many of them. And it starts in the scientific laboratories in universities now with biophotonic emissions. Imagine, I'm Spider-Man and my hands are like this and you can measure 300 biophotonic pulses a square centimeter second coming from the palm of my hand. But with intention, when I start loitering with intent, then it goes up to 10,000. Spider-Man, light, pouring out of my palms. That's why little Johnny rubs his leg when he bangs his knee. And that's why when your patients or you are interacting, you do this. Because it comes out of here, and it comes out of here. And that is the exact moment of exchange of energy. The crucial thing is not to think that you are doing it. If I'm the source of this light, then my battery, my spleen gets depleted, and I become an energy vampire. And I start sucking the energy from my patients. The only way to heal, to interact and be part of the healing process, is to be like, in the circus you have those bumper cars. They have a metal rod which is up to the grid. We have to have our crown chakra open to the matrix. Otherwise, we're using our batteries. Most of the time in my clinic, I see healers who are fucked because they've not, they thought they were doing it. It was their ego that cut off the crown. I call it the cobra effect. They've worked out that they're not all about sex, drugs, and being a thuggish salesman. They've worked out to open their heart. They've worked out to learn how to communicate. They've even worked out how to intuit. But how do you keep your center of gravity of consciousness up there? If it's not sourced from here, you're sucking everybody around you. So you have to get out of the way. Without humility, you cannot heal. It's a fact. Biophotons. Amazing. Something in the scientific community which finally shows us that the body emits light. Now, on the left, we have the thumbprint of a junk food diet. And on the right, the healthy diet. If we're surrounded with fiery light, no harmful virus or bacteria can penetrate. If we have a compromised diet, then we have Achilles meridians, where harmful frequencies and radiations can settle. It's important to shine. The etheric layer is observed in Keelian photography. Look at this, the microwaved apple on the right. We've sure as hell learned how to smash the living daylights out of things because we've lost the ability to respect the quality of our food. And that is why I say the best advice you can give to someone is to create an allotment. In England, we call it an allotment. It's like a garden where you can grow vegetables. I know here you have them too. Maybe a field over there and there's a hundred people and they're a community. I'll swap some of my sweet corn with your radishes and some of my uh, marrows for your pumpkins. What do you call it? Yeah. That's the best advice you can give someone is to grow their own food. This is the processed white bread on the left. 
and the wholemeal bread on the right. We eat light. If you want to be a human doing, eat junk food, processed bread, white sugar. I got picked up by uh, Stern this morning. I'm shameless. I was using white sugar. I couldn't find any brown sugar. But technically, if you look under a live blood microscope, white sugar is opium to white blood cells. They are smacked out. Normally, the white blood cells clean the blood all day. But I guarantee you, in your customers, their white blood cells will only be working about three hours a day because of white sugar. If you can get people off white sugar, eating raw, fresh food, and drinking charged water, you will have a success 100% of the time. I guarantee it. I will give you their money back. I will give them your money back. <laughs> anyway, I'll get some money out of it. I'll take a commission. We have all kinds of ways of measuring the biofield now. This is the electroscanning method. This is the Winora, which is a load of crap. Um, this is the PIP. Now you can see here, the left, a healthy person, on the right, someone with cancer. There's significant changes in the field. When we look in focus, we get the physical health. When we look out of focus, we see the shielding over the heart. You see, it's possible now, using this type of technology, to see the roots of diseases. Glenn Ryan said to me the other day, you know what's interesting about you, Thornton? You don't measure disease, you measure health. I'm measuring health. We are measuring health. That's what we do. And we magnify and increase the potential to get the most fabulous optimization of an individual. And when we observe healing, there's always white light. Healers are drawing down white light and sharing it. Because you do not want Pantone color 647 green projected onto you by me. Because you might want 67219. I just pr produce the whole Karen Dash box of colors, white, and you take from it what you need. That's why you have healers and healies. It's a game. It's a dance. It's a tango. And PIP is a live system. Why am I talking about these machines? Because we have just done an eighth month clinical trial into NES with all of our tools and it's unbelievably good. Your system is unbelievably good. You are very lucky people that you've picked up the right toy in the playground. People who are healthy, people who are sick. People who are health, whose health is compromised. Listen, language is everything. If I can share one thing with you now, it's please be aware of the words that you use to describe things. You are blocked. Well, thank you. I'm going to go around thinking I'm blocked. Or you are shielding yourself right now as part of a very sophisticated process, which I have no idea what's going on, but I have some kind of a lens on it, and your healing journey is right here, right now. Can we help? Can we let you go to go and collect 400? Or are you going to go back to jail? Monopoly? When we film a pregnant lady, we can even see the golden child in her womb. This would be a breech birth, by the way. Her head is up here. And notice the dental issues that so many pregnant ladies have as they give their calcium to the growing embryo. See all that congestion around the jaw? And interestingly, you may have heard of the phantom leaf effect. This is a phantom limb. This guy's had his arm removed but he's got phantom elbow pain. And sure enough, you can see that phantom limb. You see, here's the stump, and this is the phantom limb. In other words, there is a living matrix upon which our cells hang. And if the matrix is imbalanced, the 
body has to wait. You can't.